How's it going everybody? Tim here and today we're going to be reviewing this Fujifilm X-T2. I pre-ordered it a few weeks ago and got my hands on it now and we're going to be taking it through the city of San Francisco, kind of running it through its paces in terms of photo and video. See how the autofocus does because it is an autofocus beast. It's super fast. It's built really, really well. Uh, but basically I'm going to be highlighting photo, video and take you through a hardware overview of it. So let's go. So. It's got an articulating screen here. It goes 90 degrees like that, 45 degrees like that. It also has this portrait mode here where you can open it just like that. So when you're shooting portrait, you can shoot it and it looks a little something like that. The big takeaway here is this joystick right here, much like the X Pro 2, it also now shares that. The buttons feel nice and clicky, although just a little bit dampened as compared to my X Pro 2. That has like a real satisfying kind of click to it. These ones are just a little more muffled and dampened. Um, I think more because they're weather sealed. It's got a dual card slot here, taking UHS-2 cards, so super fast dual card slots right there. Fully sealed with this rubber gasket. And this is really, really high quality there. It's got a nice spring to it, but then also latches really tight. The dials on top are really good feeling too as well. We've got this um, nice metal, feel to them, um, but they click, especially this exposure compensation dial, it clicks really, really, I don't know how to say it, but it like catches, like a gear catches in there, so it's not going to wiggle or move um, and get accidentally bumped. When you click it in, it locks it so you can't move it, and when you click it up, it releases it. So I like that a lot better, that way you can kind of have this free moving around without having to like press and hold as much um, as more cameras have more in common, you know, like to press it and then move it whereas this is just kind of like lock unlock and move it as you want when you turn the dials themselves they've got a real nice kind of soft but again a real catchy like feel to them so they click in there and they're not going to get even if you bumped it it wouldn't get knocked around i don't think but you'd have to bump it pretty hard but you can again if you want to lock it just press it in like that you've got your metering modes right here that you select with this little button or not little button this little switch again Got, it carries on that theme of like a nice dampened but still very very satisfying click again over here shooting or choosing your um, movie mode your bracketing your um, continuous high continuous low single shot uh, I think double exposure advanced image settings and a panoramic view as well so that is huge along the side here you've got your diopter adjustment which I really like it being right there because then you can't bump it. Shutter button also does not have any wiggle to it. Feels nice and solid. Everything just has like a real refined feel to it. Um, the EVF actually is really, really bright. I think it's 2.6 million dots or 2.4 million dots inside there. So it's nice and bright. The magnification is 0.77X. So it's really big and bright inside. Um, it's really, really hard to tell between an optical viewfinder and this. You know, a lot of people like the X-Pro2 because it does have that optical viewfinder and zero blackout when you're continuously shooting. But for me, having an electronic viewfinder and seeing exactly what I get with a little bit more extra detail and, and more like, um, you know, shooting settings is really, really, really nice. My only kind of gripe is that the doors themselves, like there's this nice rubber along the front and the back and the thumb grip. But when you get up close on these guys, they're just like this really cheap feeling plastic that kind of like mimics the look of the rubber, but it's plastic. So I don't know if you can hear that, but that's just a little kind of cheap feeling. Again, though, they're, they're weather resistant. They have these little rubber seals and gaskets on them. So no moisture is going to get in there, but this is a very, very nice camera. Joystick falls right where your thumb should be. They did away with the little movie recording button. I think it was somewhere around here. But now when you go into movie mode, you just flip your dial over here and you press the shutter button that puts it into record mode. So very nice. Cool. So that's just basically the overall hardware. And um, let's go ahead and start shooting some photos and videos.
Here we are at the ferry building, and as you can see, I was trying to catch the seagull before it took off on me. I had 8 frames per second engaged, so I was shooting in the continuous high. My autofocus settings were AFC custom settings set to number 2 to ignore obstacles and continue to track the subject. So as you can see, I got a little bit closer to the seagull, and using this setting was unbelievable. I didn't even touch any of the tracking sensitivity or the speed tracking sensitivity, any of that stuff. I just kept everything default, and it caught this seagull, and as it was walking um, back and forth on this post beautifully and when they took off and started flying it caught them even better like it stayed locked on the entire time i was actually pretty impressed eight frames per second is fast enough for me but 11 frames per second is what you get once you get that vertical grip now taking a look here this is a big shout out to uh gordy's camera straps they're a great company awesome customer service big shout out to jenny and gordy out there thank you guys so much for sending these now here we are taking a look at the autofocus features using video. Right now I'm shooting in 4K at 24 frames per second. So the movie AF mode is set to area. So this allows you to use the joystick and, and kind of choose your autofocus points. So as you can see right now, I'm going between this guy in the red backpack and then flipping it to a, or a person walking up and watching it track. So I have the real world video of that, which I'll show you right now. So you can see if you just move the autofocus points, the focus follows where it goes. So, for example, this guy's backpack, I set it, focuses, walk up to this guy, boom. Walk up to those people walking away, back to the backpack. Super quick, this guy, follow him, move the autofocus point. Follow him, and it's super quick. Back to the backpack, boom. Come down to that woman here and it just tracks. That was a bad example, but it tracks beautifully. It does a great job. Now, I felt like this is a pretty good test. It really showed me that you can choose the autofocus points and have the camera respond to those autofocus points and really lock in and then continue to autofocus and track while people are walking around. The autofocus is brilliant. It's really fast. It's responsive. Um, it's great. And here are some more video samples of that without me kind of talking over it, but you can hear the onboard audio from the camera. And it focuses super, super quick, and I'm basically just walking. I'll switch it up. Actually, you're going to be the subject here. So walk to your left, and I'm just going to keep moving this joystick over, and hopefully it focuses on her. So keep walk this way. So if I move the focus points to the left, it stays on her. Now walk back. Now walk straight back. Be careful. And now I've got it on the center and it's just tracking her beautifully. Now another feature worth highlighting is that you can use Fuji's film simulations while recording video. This one is the classic chrome and it looks really, really good. It's got a nice muted look to it, but still offers some soft colors as you can tell in this footage right here. Next up, my favorite is the Acros black and white. You can see the autofocus kicking butt as my wife walks toward the camera, but it's still locking on her and keeping everything nice and in focus while offering you those deep blacks, bright highlights that across uh, offers. This one is the Velvia Film Simulation. This one's got a nice pop to it. As you can see, as she's walking through the crowd, it still tracks her really, really well, doesn't lose sight of her, and the autofocus is on point. Now, one of the big benefits of shooting in 4K is that the Fuji actually shoots at a higher resolution than 4K and then downsamples it back to 4K, which basically results in a nice really high resolution image without any aliasing or moray. As you can tell by usually when you shoot brick, you get some moray patterns and I don't see any right here. Um, I don't know what you guys are seeing after the compression that YouTube does, but at least on my screen, it's not showing that at all. Aliasing is pretty minimal as well. Everything is looking tack sharp and I cannot believe the 4K image coming out of this camera. That along with the Fuji film simulations, this makes for an awesome package for everyday shooting and professional use if you want to use those film simulations. If not, check out the F-Log. Now borrowing from the 4K technology in that it shoots a 5K image and then downsamples it, uh, Full HD gets the same treatment. So when you shoot Full HD at 1920 by 1080, it basically shoots a 3000 by 
1687 image and then down samples it down to a 1920 by 1080 at 100 megabits per second. So it gives you this finely detailed image with no aliasing or no more. And as you can see right here, this is actually 1080 upscaled to 4K, but it's doing that and auto tracking beautifully. All right, well, I've had quite a bit of hands on with this camera and I can now provide you with my final thoughts with the Fuji X-T2. When it comes to photo, this camera kills it, knocks it out of the park. You get 24 megapixels, ISO 200 to 51,200. You get all the amazing lenses that Fuji offers, all their primes. You get Fuji colors in the film simulation, plus you get a camera that is so robust, weather sealed, full magnesium alloy. It makes sense where all the dials are, in my opinion, and it's nice that everything has a dial. On top of that, you get eight frames per second out of the box um, with the vertical boost grip or whatever they call it, you get an additional eight, three, three frames, so bringing it to 11 frames per second. With that, you also get um, better performance with the EVF that brings it to 100 frames per second. And I can tell you looking through it, it looks fan stinking -tastic. Um Very, very clean looking. Actually, I just noticed that when you shoot in the panoramic setting, let me shoot this for you. It actually zooms in quite a bit but it gives you a line to shoot and it pumps out a I'll start there and it instantly gives you a pretty sweet um, panoramic shot that's pretty cool and I love that everything that you want to change has a physical dial or a knob or a button or something um, and it's brilliant. I guess the ultimate goal for me is to move away from the Canon system and into the Fuji system for my wedding work and my family portraits and my portraits in general because I love the form factor of these cameras. I love how light they are. I like the support that you get from Fuji with their firmware updates and I like that they're kind of putting themselves out there and trying a lot of new things to stay current but also creating beautiful cameras and gorgeous imagery with their system. And not only that, they have the wonderful primes. So from a photo aspect, this camera absolutely kills it. Now from a video perspective, it also knocks it out of the park. Um, I can compare this camera to really the only video camera that I really use, which is my Sony a7S II. And I use that for wedding videos and then family videos and then commercial type work. I don't think this will replace that, although I've never, I haven't tested it with F-Log yet. As soon as I get that vertical grip, then I'll really be able to push HDMI out, get longer recording times, and then be able to test F-Log. And I really wish that they would put F-Log in the actual camera without having to use the grip to get F-Log. That would be spectacular. I also wish that they would expand the recording times with just the camera to more than 10 minutes. Like, I want to use this camera as my walk around thing with, you know, like during day trips and vacationing. And the fact that I can only shoot 10 minute clips is, I mean, I guess that's fine when I think about it, really. In a professional setting, it's more controlled. I'm not, more, not, I'm way less run and gun, so having a grip on there is nice, actually. I think about it. Hmm. It shoots 4K, it oversamples, it shoots 5K, actually, but then downsamples it to a 4K image to help with moray and aliasing, which I wish, or which I hope you got to see in the video. Um, and I didn't see any moray or aliasing. I haven't looked at it on my computer yet, but in the com when I was looking at it through the EVF, I didn't see any banding or moray or aliasing or anything like that. And I will try to push the colors just a little bit just to see if banding occurs in the skies especially. But from what I saw from the Fuji colors, from stock shooting straight out of the camera was awesome. I love 1080, the way that this thing shoots 1080. Again, it oversamples the image again and then shrinks it down to a 1080 by 1920 image so that it helps with more and aliasing. Um, but with that, you don't get that crop either. So shooting 4K on this guy, you get a 1.17 crop. So on the 35 millimeter, F2, that equates to about 50 millimeters, but then when you punch in with 4K, that's about a 58 millimeter focal length there. So it's a little more difficult to shoot handheld because you can see the camera shakes a little bit more. It's a little more apparent, but the 4K image coming out of this is really sharp, really punchy, great colors, and um, it's fantastic. Um, but the 1080 coming out of this is even better in my opinion. Not so much than 4K, but it's better because it doesn't crop in. You get 60 frames a second, so it's a good little slow motion if you wanna, if you wanna add that later. I'm really excited about taking this camera with me literally every day and everywhere that I go. 
day trips, vacations, and doing my montage videos with this. What I will do next is create like a little montage video. We're heading up to Joshua Tree in about a week and a half, or in a few weeks actually, and I will take solely this, and hopefully I'll have my 23 millimeter lens that's gonna come out pretty soon, but hopefully I'll have that, which will be about a 35 millimeter equivalent, and that could be a very, very cool um, 4K lens, and also a very cool general purpose lens. That's gonna be able to cover quite a bit. So I can't wait to test that out, test out the intervalometer up there. Um, but yeah, this camera, in terms of video, is so rock solid that it gives you everything you need if you're the type of shooter who is more of like a run and gun but still likes high quality uh, video, then this is, this is it. Small body, I like the EVF. Again, uh, there's not much else that I can say to better promote this camera. But if you have any questions or comments, anything that I missed, drop them in the drop box below. Hit me up on Twitter, at Tim's Tech Blog. Instagram, at Tim All Day. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.